All right, what's going on, everybody? It is Monday, having a good time in the green room before we kick the things off here officially uh, tonight. If you're here watching me live, let me know. We are on Amazon Live. We are on YouTube tonight as well. Excited for this one because we got the doctor in the building. He's going to help us with our live streaming, with our video. Uh, Doc got some he got some history. Uh, we were kind of going back on some things I used to watch back in the day on TV around tech and tech support and uh, kind of knowing that he had a part in that and knows some people in that space. Uh, it was just like this confirmation of like, yep, this is the guy that you guys need to listen to for sure tonight. So if you have questions around anything related to video, live streaming, your gear, let us know uh, tonight in the chat. Uh, we didn't even, I don't have a, like an official title for tonight. It was like, literally I got Doc on and this conversation might go anywhere tonight. So it's really based on the questions that you guys have, the comments that you guys have, because we wanna make sure that we're showing up and being able to be the most valuable asset to you guys during this next hour. So I know I got a few people in the chat. Let me check over here on the Amazon live side, cause Amazon's on the furthest side of my screen. I see I got, I got James over there on Amazon tonight. Good to see you here, James. And I got a few other people here. I got my wife watching here. Oh, that means my wife and my baby girl are both watching. Good to see y'all here as well. One of these days, we're going to have all of us on camera. All three of us. All four of us on camera. We'll, we'll see what, what, what happens. Um, but good to have you guys here live with me and all my replay viewers. Shout out to my replay viewers because you guys definitely watch the replays. You guys put comments in the replays, so I do check those out after the live stream broadcast. Let me shout out sponsors real quick before we get started. Blueprint Influence, you guys, if you want to tap into brand deals and sponsorships, check out Blueprint Influencers. Uh, we got an amazing community going on over there. Uh, people that are on Amazon Live like I am, people on YouTube. We got Instagram people, we got uh, Pinterest people, we got podcasters over there. So if you're looking to get brand deals and sponsorships, make sure that you check us out in that community. We teach every single week. We actually had a, a Amazon Live training earlier today talking about different strategies to maximize what we can do as influencers and creators on the Amazon platform. So check that out. And, and I got a special giveaway with one of my brand sponsor partners, Sure Microphone. So I have partnered up and teamed up with Sure to give away a custom SM58 microphone, okay? This is custom microphone. It's not your typical black and gray color scheme. It's a custom microphone with the signature Sure lime green color. So if you want to uh, have your chance, wait, wait I, need to look, I need to look over this way. If you want to, have a chance to win that microphone, go to custom sm58.com, custom58, sm58.com. No purchase necessary. All you have to do is just put in your information for a chance to win. So we're actually be doing a live uh, announcement of the winner on the 10th, I believe, of May. So make sure that you go ahead and check that out if you're interested in that microphone. You guys may know that behind me, I have a whole bunch of sure products that are on the shelf back here so they're awesome to work with and i think you guys that want a chance to win the microphone should just sign up for it so it's pinned in the uh comments section of the youtube chat and then those of you who are watching on amazon you guys will hear me talk more about that as well because the contest is short now you have a few days to go ahead and just enter you don't have to go and do all the follow stuff you don't have to go in and put on your whole resume, none of that stuff. Just name, email address, you're good to go. We'll announce the winner on May 10th. All right, I think I got all that good stuff out the way. Who else do I got over here in the comment section? Denver Buckets, who is that? Let me know your real name over there. Uh, Michael Ferris here, good to see you, Michael. Uh, always good to see you here um, on YouTube. Now, let's get this show started. I told this guy, we ain't gonna be long doing intros. Now. This guy, I <laughs> he's over here laughing in the background. This guy I have followed uh, for some time, I guess more so with the new uh, wave of live streaming when 2020 happened, everybody was jumping on live streaming and the communities of live streamers really started to show out uh, because I didn't know a whole bunch of people that like live stream and content creation and video was kind of their thing. 
I knew people that were looking to live stream for their businesses. I knew people that were using video in different capacities, but like there was never a place like a community of like live streamers. And this is kind of what we do when we help other people improve their video and their live stream. And then this Doc Rock guy was in this community answering all these questions and talk about this platform called Ecamm. And so I, I kind of changed the, the background to a little orange of what I did have with my lighting today, because this dude, is amazing when it comes to teaching and showing people how to level up and then he has all these little lights and colors going on in the background of his setup over there i'm gonna welcome mr doc rock to my live stream what's going on doc out there in the great state of hawaii i gotta come visit Man, thank you good to see you it's super funny i'm laughing over here just because it's hilarious but yeah i, I tend to get a little bit nuts with my setup <laughs> It started out extremely modest and whatever, and you just keep adding, keep adding, and then it'd be like one of those cars that got like all the things hanging from the, you know, you know what I'm yep. talking about. Yep. You've you seen a Bama whip before. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it starts off simple because you just see, well, like for me, it started off real simple. It's just what I needed. And then when you start teaching or showing people different things, you kind of need other parts and components to help teach them, even exactly though you might happened. not necessarily need it. And it just kind of adds up. So. Man, yes. Doc. As a matter of fact, I remember you started with just that light that's behind you, and yep. it was basically a white wall. You're yep, just like, yo, Monte, I'm going to come here, I'm going to teach you this stuff, and now look at you. You yeah. got everything all set stuff up. Everywhere. So I got 100%. Two desk up in here and everything, man. Man, I'm, yes. I'm so glad to have you here, get a chance to not only have you talk to my audience, but just get a chance to kind of know you, because this is the first time we've had like a one-on-one -on -one type of just personal yeah. type of conversation chat. Um, and I, I, I really am excited because you have history that you can bring to today. And one of the things that we were talking about uh, in, in, the, in a green room was I used to watch this show back in the day on TV called Call for Help. And it was this show where people would literally call in with their tech problems. And there was this guy that would sit there and answer the problems. And as a techie, as a, someone that was doing help desk, fixing local computers and all that kind of stuff, I loved watching the show because it was like the only show on TV that I could relate to in the industry. There was no YouTube and all these nope. different places that you could go and find these answers. It was call in. This guy answered these questions and you were like, oh, I know this guy. And I'm like, hold on. This guy really has been around for a while when it comes to tech and live streaming. Take me through your story, man. Like, how did you get into tech? How did you get into live streaming? And and, and share with us, like, some of the, the value of knowing the past to kind of help you in the present right now. All right. So, strangely enough, I kind of was always in the computers uh, back in the day. This is going to sound super old. Back in the day <laughs> in school, we, we had a Commodore pet. And uh, there was only like a handful of people allowed to touch it. We got that machine. We had a Texas Instruments. We had like a, a Apple, like original Apple II, whatever. And I was on the AV team, you know, like the teacher would need a VHS and the TV or a projector or a little carousel joint, you know, with the slides on it. My job was to go to the library, put it on the cart, take it to the t you know class and set it up. And so that was probably from like, maybe fifth sixth grade or something like that so when we got the computer in like seventh grade i was one of the first people that got to mess with it because you know i was part of, i don't know why they just connected that as part of the av team which is funny now because it would be you know back then your computers were so far removed from av it wasn't funny but you know to them early 80s it was like um it's electric and there's a screen oh it must be tv <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we had to figure everything out. So by the time they started to get where, you know, people could go to Sears, Montgomery War, Radio Shack, whatever, and get their computer, I had already had five, six years in the game. You know what I mean? By the time we get around to walking into a box computer store, yo, I had been in it. You know, I had been in it since like 79, you know, whatever, 80. So, yeah, it's kind of a trip. Um, that really helped out. And so from being the person who just knew all of this stuff, you always was the call for help 
person. So when that show came on, yo, that show spoke to me. Like, you know, everyone says, even with your content, right? Make sure your content is speaking to one person in your audience. Mm -hmm. I know you have a hundred people watching, but you're talking to one individual. And Leo and, you know, uh, Michael Sargent, you know, all of them people. I, I was just telling you, Will Wheaton was on that show. Maybe most people don't remember that. Will Wheaton was on that show. Uh, Christina, they was all talking to me. That and Screensavers with Patrick Norton and, you know, Kevin Rose, Sarah Lane, like the OGs. So, you know, those are my shows. And that really made me want to go into tech support. So I went into tech support right after that show. Yeah, that, that's awesome, man. And and now you do tech support. We do a little different now. Now we can just show up on yeah. video and all these apps and we can just answer people's questions. What yeah. are the things, because you've been around video and live streaming for so, I won't, I won't say it like that. I make you sound old. I was going to say no, for so I am, long. I am old and I have been around <laughs> for so long. My first uh, camera was three pieces. So oh, yeah, okay, I'm okay. literally that old. <laughs> okay. All right. So you've been around for a while. One of the things, Doc, that people don't realize now is like the cost to do what we do now is significantly less than what it used to be back in the day. You know, sometimes people will say, hey, I don't have much of a budget, but I want to pull off this 4K, but I don't want to pay a couple thousand. Like, I, but I don't, I want to be on Amazon and YouTube and Facebook and I want to look super good in my background, but I don't want to pay like $200. Like, I don't want to pay any of that. But like, back then to even show up on like live video and just to get a decent camera can you kind of talk about like the the cost to go live to do something like what we would want to do now compared to the cost of going live now to actually do what it is that we do now oh man it's such a trip okay so first of all let's just take let's go pre-internet right so you had to be in a tv studio Right. So in order for you and I to have this conversation, I'd have a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar camera in front of me. I'd probably have about six to ten, ten thousand dollar or more a piece lights um, for you to put my name, your name. That would require a Quantel paint box or a Quantel Harriet. And for the text part, it would require what's called a Chiron. That's why they still call it a Chiron to this day. So we just jacked in another three million bones. And we needed that at each end, you know, mm. one there, one here in the Lulu. Then we had to rent satellite time so that we could not be in the same room. So, I mean, what you're looking at right here at 30 frames a second probably would have been close to about $5 million worth of kit. And then people will get their thing turned on and be like, I'm, I'm not paying that. That's expensive. And I, I kind of want to pump them in the nose. You know, your grandpa used to give you the flick, you know, just not really hurt you, but just to snap you to your senses. Mm -hmm. I'd be wanting to flick the mirrors, bro. I'm like, man, you have no idea the blessing that we have right now. Even when people say, oh, I want to buy an SM7B, that mic is expensive. You know, I have a mic on the floor right next to my leg that's like three Gs. It's, that's a that's still cheap. In in broadcast recording, um, like a Sony C800, $15,000 mic. So your, your Mariah Carey's, your Whitney Houston's, your Michael Jackson, Rihanna, all of them. A lot of people record on the Sony C800. And, you know, literally it's a 20 G's mic. So mm -hmm. uh, 400 bucks for a mic is nothing. Not even yeah. funny. I, and, and the audio people laugh at the streaming people complaining about the $400 mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm a camera guy and I, I love being behind the cameras. I, I would live stream our churches. So I remember like little DVs and then VHS stuff. And then we saw like this wave of these mirrorless cameras come in. And I'm just like, yo, I can get that quality out of that camera and go live and like I, I when i show up on zoom and i'm sure the same thing happens to you especially for somebody you've never met before they're like what are you on like what what kind of camera is yeah. that and, and they notice the quality right off the bat and when, when and, you were in church right let me ask this question real quick just mm -hmm. understanding when you were in church were you guys on the jbc super vhs panasonic yeah. super vhs or the sony dvs panas well we had panasonic and the sony dvs yeah okay so you know what i'm saying like even then those are five thousand dollars a piece yeah yeah. And that's not even that long ago that's like millennial yeah, yeah i i've still got the, some of the mini dvs like from a christmas play i was in i still have them like okay i gotta convert this off <laughs> of here because i don't know how to watch this right now but yeah it was yeah. not that long ago that we had that technology so 
Um, I'm interested to see what you guys had in the chat. How, how far do y'all go back in the chat? I see Phil Davis here. Chris is here. Steve is here. Good to see y'all joining in here. Uh, Rob is here. Rob says the Blue Yeti. <laughs> the Blue Yeti. Uh, yeah, microphones have changed. Lights have changed. Cameras have changed. Now we're in this phase where like anybody could just show up, Doc. And I know for someone that's been been in video for a while some people show up better than others and i think some people do a disservice when they show up by not showing up with like a, a microphone versus just the laptop screen maybe they don't know the knowledge that oh i can buy something that make myself look a little bit better on camera but what can you say to people that are trying to show up now on video because they can because we have free platforms but they don't want to invest in using some equipment like a like a camera that actually looks decent because we can stream at 1080p a microphone that actually sounds good because we don't have to use a built-in microphone on our computers and we still can't hear you that good what can you say to the people that just don't want to upgrade because they feel they don't necessarily have to um reincubate camo <laughs> and use your phone <laughs> just start there like you got to get your first couple of joints out with your phone so you can get the bug and understand right so look i could just go right here and this is my phone and it's fine but this is better than the thing you have built into your to your computer because well first of all there's three cameras <laughs> and so it already it automatically is better you know what i mean um and then I don't know in your Amazon carousel if you have it set in there, but the Samsung Q2U is a $50 microphone that will just make you look glorious. I mean, sound glorious. Even the short SM58 that they're giving away, right? SM58 is 100 bones. It's basically the little brother of this. And it sounds amazing. Uh, so much so that probably everyone in the chat, everyone that watches this in the replay, have held that microphone at some point in time and spoke into one at some point in time because they've been around since the 60s, <laughs> you know, and they're pretty much bulletproof. Mine in the back there in my DJ box is probably 35 years old. It sounds exactly like it did the first day. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's, I mean, honestly, start there. You're looking at a $100 mic and your phone and your square. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing what these phones are capable of doing now. I was I was teaching in my group on Thursday. I said, shoot with the 4K. You, you got it. Shoot with the 4K, especially yeah. if you're oh, like so recording many people don't. videos. Um, <laughs> and especially if you don't went ahead and bought the big old gig, you know, shoot with 4K, get the good quality, and then stand out a little bit more than the people that just don't want to go in and change the setting. Um, I got uh, I got the camera junkie here, too. Good to see you here as so well Luis? on the live stream here. I got to get him on the show here as well. Um, when, I, when I got started live streaming, Doc, it was 2016. So I came, I kind of came up on video, not because I want, necessarily wanted to, because I'm a behind the camera type of guy. Like I'll hook up all your systems for you. I'm not trying to be the face of the live stream. So 2016, I got introduced to like Blab, but really Periscope is where I spent the majority of my time showing up. And I was teaching people how to use OBS. Don't laugh at me, Doc. I, at least no, I just up. Blab, it just it sounds like it's so long ago but it's not that's what's crazy to me right <laughs> like i'm thinking about blab like it's ancient and it's not it's 2016. yeah that's so crazy when i was showing up i was showing people how to use obs and i was like this is a pretty cool platform you know you could go in and you could build out what you guys are watching now and you could now so now there's a free platform i could build all this custom stuff out i could go live for free to like facebook and youtube and I was like, man, there's a lot of power in what you can do software wise for free. And I was like, okay, this is cool. So I'm teaching all these people how to do it. My first webinar ever about how to live stream with OBS. I had over 150 people registered for this webinar. Didn't know about like selling courses or any of this stuff. I was just like, yeah, I'll teach you how to do it. But one thing about OBS in particular was like, it was a learning curve for people that didn't want to learn. Like it was a learning curve to kind of set up an interview. And then we saw the evolution of all these different softwares start to come up. And one of the communities that you're part of and one of the brand ambassadors, you can fix all the titles for me, Doc, but is Ecamm. And I was like, whoa, I've never used Ecamm because I use another platform. I won't even talk about it on this show tonight. It'll be the Ecamm show tonight. because That's where I came from, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> but when Ecamm showed up, 
I don't know if it was the community that was driving it. I don't know if it was the Mac enthusiasts that were driving it, but Ecamm now is a software that will now lets you for a low cost do a heck of a lot when it comes to live streaming. Can you kind of talk about OBS and this free version of what we all kind of got started on or what's available versus using a paid platform that is probably not priced at what it really needs to be priced at for what it can actually do these days. No, I just want them to raise the price so that I can get a raise. Um, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, no, it's super funny that you say that because I started where you are. And when my company that I was working for at the time, AOL, when they decided to try to merge us in with Engadget, which wasn't happening because uh, we were all Mac. And at that time, Engadget was somehow a little bit anti-Mac and heavy PC. So the idea of blurring us together was weird. Um, but they tried for a minute that lasted about a week. Then all of us Mac people left. And then the actually head of Engadget left and started The Verge. The rest is similar history. No one even talks about Engadget anymore. Everyone talks about The Verge. So we know where the magic was, J Top. <laughs> um, so it's funny, but um, yeah, I, I, I went to OBS and I was monkeying around with that and Boinks TV sort of going back and forth. And OBS was somewhat winning because OBS was extremely familiar to Wirecast. Like they were basically identical, but it was free. But with that, there was a bunch of headaches and you couldn't go to support. You couldn't even go to a decent like forum and get help from anybody because there's no one person to blame that one bad thing about open source and i get open source is the great jump off for many many things the bad part is there is no one entity that you can go to to get problem solved so in the middle of that Streamlabs kids came out and they go okay we're going to fork this project our way and we won't get into what forking means but um they got into it they start building it their way and customize it but they were like yo we cannot actually swing both mac and pc so we're going to go pc only because only gamers go live anyway and that's how live streaming kind of got the gamer slant you know what i mean it was basically gamers and webcam girls that was it so they um later like three years later they decided to make a mac version and I go, okay, let me check it out. And it was horrible. And a lot of times what happens when you just pick up a program and you throw it into the Apple uh, developer program that you can get for free, basically, and you tell it to just make this PC program run like a Mac, it just gives you the skeleton. You're supposed to go in and fix stuff. A lot of companies just ship that and call it working. And then, so I went hunting and then I found Ecamm. And what it was, the community was small at that time. But right as that happened, lockdown happened and so all of a sudden all of these mac people went looking for how they were going to do their thing because the only stuff out there was very pc so the mac options were us wire class and the browser tools you know well obs as well and i was just on a evangelism is don't even start the obs thing yes it's free but it's going to give you a headache and you already don't know what you're doing because i saw your question so uh, you're going to probably <laughs> want to use this because it will work and you know that just answering questions my family owns an electronic store so i know a lot about electronics you know i was a radio dj for many years a nightclub dj for many years so i understood the audio side of it and i've been filmmaker since you know high school so i knew the video side of it so for the first time all of my sort of specialism specialist take whatever the areas of operation fell into a single place at one time and i was no longer the weird guy because i mean you know because you're the camera person right mm -hmm. us in tech we were weird the video guys were weird tech oh, people yeah. wasn't about that life you know they're either playing games or you know doing network stuff on bbs's and you know downloading things and you know trying to figure out irc and all this other crap right so the video squad was weird the people editing on computer was weird right even guys doing computer music was weird until not that long ago you know what I mean? Not until EDM became big before all of the computer music stuff was expensive. So like industries that I had been around because I was always interested in the tech, they just finally merged together and said, hey, live streaming, let's go. Mm -hmm. And that was about 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Man. It, it, it's kind of crazy. 2020 just sped up so much. And being able to connect with you and a whole bunch of other people 
that are live streamers. I see India just showed up on my live stream, you know, You're... seeing seeing like everyone and shout out to all the ladies that show up on live stream because I remember like it was like male dominated and, and as a lot of the tech industry still is, but you see a lot more ladies coming into this space. And I think that's awesome. You know, when you can find people that you can just more easily relate to. So, you know, having someone like India, who's doing a like, hundred days in a row of live streaming, if someone does, is scared to show up now and, and live stream, you know, it's like, Hey, go, go look at what she's doing over there because she's showing up every single day on camera and, and that's just amazing in itself that's facts. you know it's funny when india was even she's not really scared but she was like humming back and forth like she should as she shouldn't and then she's like i don't know i don't know it wasn't like she ever really verbalized they were scared but there was definitely something scary right a lot of that for us all of us comes from perfectionism right yep. we all want to be perfectionism i i know some people are going to think no it doesn't matter who you are but trust you me any BPOC slash marginalized person, you actually have it more because you're constantly told by other people that you're not enough. So like that stacks on top of it, right? And then I was like, what are you afraid of? You're from Brooklyn. <laughs> you got mm -hmm. nothing to be afraid of. Like we grew up, like look the stuff that the rest of the country goes, oh, don't go to Brooklyn, you might die. We go, nah, fam, we just don't want you to come here because the food is good over here. But <laughs> it's not any, it's not fear to us. Like we know what it is, right? Kids that grew up in the Alps are not afraid of heights, right? So it was like, you really don't have anything to compare. So just, if you can handle New York, especially in the eighties, like ain't nothing, nothing else to be afraid of. We passed it. Mm -hmm. So, I'm glad she was able to put that behind her and do her thing because she's killing it. Yeah. And she's super fun to watch. She's entertaining. Um, you know, man, her and her girl, they did a master class on TikTok. And I can't say enough about it. I'm like, yo, this is a $500 course y'all did for free on the internet. Y'all should somebody go peep that joint. I'm telling you before she take it down and start that's, selling it. That's crazy, right? Like you can show up and give all this value now for free on the internet and look good doing it. Like look professional doing it. It's not just, Hey, I got this dirty room and stuff behind me. I'm just going to sit here and just record a video, but like it can be professionally done. And, and I tell people, you don't need a large space. Like, like if you got a four foot wall behind you, like, what that's all y'all gonna see right now you ain't gonna see the rest of the mess that's like going on eight, in this office I'm right like now eight by eight or nine by nine my joint is kind of small like and just, here, wall. i'm gonna show you something monty let me, Look, let me shoot you guys my, my, my room is not exactly that gorgeous because it's messy <laughs> i just crop in playing <laughs> yeah like oh it's my shelf over there it's got all, like every star wars thing ever made in this one shelf so it's kind of a mess mm -hmm. so the think and then everybody's like oh your space looks so good i said like, y'all can't see this y'all can't see this shelf Yo, over here doc people would people would think i had like 18 cameras now i got a lot of cameras now but i would use the crop feature so i would crop in like you did or i would crop out the other side or crop out this other side so when i'd switch all they were looking at was a different version of the crop and yeah I, things like that and what software allows you to do especially on video because being on video you don't want it to be static all the time so you could yes. you can get creative with it you know if your personality isn't the best on camera like okay i i used to do camera tricks i would want you to kind of see other elements and i would in obs i would show people how to do it i would bring like fire on the screen just to distract him like why is there fire on the screen i don't know it's just something to do just so i could be more comfortable and showing up on video so if i could show you my knowledge of tech it was it was my comfort zone to show up on video because if i had just have yeah. to stand here and teach you then i'm not going to do the best and you're probably not going to listen that long either so you know even it's if funny too show, it's just um, like, gotta be something that's comfortable and different and you know keep the activity going I, I think it's funny too a lot of people come to us, especially me because i'm you know nerd and i got i call it gas syndrome or gear acquisition syndrome yeah the people come in and they're always asking me you know like oh what's the next camera i should get what's the next mic i should get whatever i was like no what you need to do is go to learn how to uh tell stories better or you know learn how to speak extemporaneously off the cuff like if someone put you in a corner and said i need you to hold this stage for five minutes what are you going to talk about are you going to sit there and mm, ah, mm, 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 ah, for five minutes? No, nah, it's not going to work, right? Yep. So you have to gain the ability 
to with somebody say, hey, can you stall for five minutes? Just go and and then speak off the top of the dome and engage people and interest them in what they're doing and, you know, kind of hold for it. Now, again, I'm lucky because I did radio. Um, what we always got stuck with was whenever there's a concert, right? And I'll pick on a person who guarantee comes late every time and the audience wants to kill us, Casey and Jojo. And then, so, you know, I'm standing on the stage, you know, there's 20,000 people in the stadium and the boss is like, Hey doc, can you go on stage and distract all these angry women? And I'm like, what, where they at? Like, are they still at the hotel? And I'm like, no, nah, man, you're not sending me out there to die, but that was my job. So I had to go out there and basically entertain people that are really pissed you know and we're talking tickets that's 200 bones in what was that 96 200 bones in 96 is what 900 dollars today you know so they're irritated and you got to go out there and have fun with them and just you know play and you know joke around and keep them busy for the 20 minutes so that case and jojo could just come up in there like divas like they want to and just show up <laughs> so i was lucky that i had that training that i think it does make it easier for me but you can learn that stuff. It's learnable, right? right? In your neighborhood right now, open up your browser, go search for adult improv classes. Your local university or community college right now has public speaking classes. Public speaking doesn't have to mean standing in a room with 50, 1100 people no more. Now your public speaking is sitting right where we're doing right now. And I'm speaking to the public, mm -hmm. right? So, Half of those classes are free from your uni or, you know, in, in New York, we got something called a learning annex, right? They take the old, the uh, the elementary and high schools, or whatever, at night and they let people come in and just teach classes. So uh, you can find this stuff. Right. Yeah. And if you don't know where that is, hit up uh, Toastmasters like this. It's just it's too easy to solve these problems that, you know, everyone li likes to have. I mean. Honestly, you could teach yourself just staying in the house and looking at, you know, charisma on camera or something, yeah. Evan Carmichael. But there's no excuse anymore. I went to a, a, a local network in probably back in 2018. And the, I didn't, I, there wasn't even, it wasn't even BNI. It was just a local, you know, Facebook group. Hey, there's this local meet, meet and greet and you guys can hang out. The, rest, the lady that owns the restaurant, she hosted it. So it was like free lunch. So that was an incentive to show up too, right? Hey, so I, I, I go, <laughs> I go and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm shy. So I'm not trying to really talk to anybody. So everybody stands up, tells people what they do. And this lady, she comes over and she's like, well, hey, I, I work at the title agency, uh, real estate title agency. If you want to come teach a class, let me know. And at the time I was like, you know, I'll come and I, I don't mind teaching a class. I just don't want to be in front of people. So how is this going to work, Monty? Right. But what I did was I allowed that to be an opportunity for me to practice speaking in public. And it really did help me when I came back to being on video because I was doing video first. So I was actually more comfortable standing in front of a camera and having a conversation and engaging with an audience than I am standing up on a stage. So when I was able to stand on that stage and like do these classes in person and then kind of come back I realized, oh man, I, I've learned a lot of techniques where I can use in both sides because like, like you're here, the only person I see is you, Doc. I can't see the facial yeah. expressions of what's going on yeah. in the chat right now. Like I, I, I can't I can tell you right now, Chris anything. Stone is making faces at us. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's funny you say that because in 2008, right after the whole Bernie Madoff thing happened or whatever, um, you, Twitter was two years old. Facebook was relatively new. And here, my other half, we have a real estate company, right? So um, the real, real Board of Realtors was looking for somebody to teach social media classes as a continuing ed. And I was known as one of the early adopters of Twitter here because we used to do tweet ups. You remember those things? Mm -hmm. You know, we used to do lots and lots of tweet ups. And so at all the tweet ups, being the DJ, I'm always the MC. So everybody, I would always be on the flyer for all the tweet ups. You know, so they were like, it's going to be at our club. You know, Doc's going to DJ and MC the whole thing, whatever. When nobody was getting paid because the whole thing went dumb. I was standing in a room at the Japanese Cultural Center teaching realtors how to use social media. Like, I think we charged them like a hundred bucks a pop. And what do we have? 26,000 realtors in Hawaii. Mm. Like where everybody else was broke. I was loving it. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you'd be surprised. You, I, I, Something I was talking about with somebody today, everyone thinks you have to be an expert. No, you just have to be more knowledgeable. People are afraid of experts and to, depending on the type of environment that you're teaching in, right? Mm-hmm. People want to see you, Monty, go up there and say you're shy and uncomfortable, but know what you're talking about. They connect with you more because they're uncomfortable, mm-hmm. right? But if they're uncomfortable and you walk in chest out like, oh, I got this, like everybody's going to be afraid of you because they won't see themselves in that light. Mm-hmm. So, you know, people are like, well, I, I wanted my stream to be perfect. I'm, you're the best. I'm like, you ever seen my streams? I screw up every single time and don't care. I just laugh and keep, keep going. going, you know, and I think people tend to attach that. Hey, I don't have to make it perfect because Doc ain't perfect. That's mm-hmm. the, what I want to say. I want. I want that to be a known quantity. My joints never fit to be perfect. Yeah, I mean, but we gonna have fun. I'm gonna clown you. I'm gonna talk spicy about you. If you say something bad about yourself, like you shy, Monty, uh, that doesn't <laughs> exist. It's not in the DSM five. There's something our parents taught us that we can ignore. Uh, yeah, just mm-hmm. one of those things. So yeah. I, I appreciate that you said that because it, I think that's something that everyone needs to get through their head. There is no perfect stream. You know, there's only one person that's perfect, and he's not us. He's up yeah. there. So yeah, the technical things will happen. I trip over my words all the time, and I've just embraced it, and I keep on going with it. And uh, yeah. and, and when you, you know you're doing okay when people keep showing up, like even through yep. your mistakes, and people keep showing up. I remember uh, early on teaching people the uh, live streaming where you know their streams would like cut out. Like they would try to figure out why the stream cut out. Didn't know, and I said, "Well, just reconnect and come back." I said, "Your people will come back." I said, "Your loyal audience will come back," and so they were. They said they were reconnecting. The people were still there. I'm like, yeah, because they actually want to listen to you. They they'll they'll let go some of the imperfections and the technical issues because that's not why they're showing up. They're showing up for you. The technology yep. is just that conduit to connect you to them. So I encourage all of you guys to continue. You know, to when you show say that, that um, when Chris Perillo first started, Locker Dome, for those of you who remember, you, he was one of the first people to go live on YouTube because they gave it to him while they were trying to figure out what they were doing. And it was a known quality. Chris was going to get dropped in the middle of the live and everybody knew exactly what to do. So we knew the steps of what to do if Gnome dropped off. You know, we all would just sit around. We count like was like 15 seconds or something and then reconnect. Or you would have the channel back open to find the new link and go mm-hmm. in because mm-hmm. even YouTube didn't know how to fix it. Mm-hmm. And you're right. People will do it. And as far as like I'm with you, I make stupid mistakes in my words all the time. My community just started calling them docisms because I just be making <laughs> words on the fly. <laughs> and see, and that leads to a shirt, which leads to more sales, which leads to more revenue. Oh, oh my goodness. How much shirtable shirts have I invented? Oh, <laughs> I can't even think of. Yeah, uh, super let me, funny. Let me make sure I let you guys know that are joining in a little bit later here. If you didn't miss, catch it at the beginning, I have teamed up with Sure, you guys, to give away an SM58, a custom SM58 microphone. So if you guys want to have your chance to win it, no cost to you. All you got to do is just go to customsm58.com, and we will announce the winner live on Amazon Live on May 10th. So make sure that you guys check that out. You guys know, like, I love my Sure products. So when they said, do I want to be a part of it? I said, yes. I think my guy Chris Stone is in the chat. I think he's a part of this as well. I think they might have an SM58 as well. So you got two chances to win an SM58 microphone. So make sure you got guys go and check that out. Um, I want to jump into some audience Q&A. If you're here live, make sure you ask us questions. We are real. We, we, we've kind of let you guys know that, yes, we know what we're talking about, but we ain't perfect either. But we, we, we know what perfect looks like. But look, if you're trying to get too perfect, you, you're you never going to hit live. You're never going to hit record because, oh, my God, my light is not turned the right way. Oh, my gosh, my microphone is not pointed the right way. Oh, my gosh, I have something just in the frame. I need to reset. Like, You'll never get started. So if you have questions in, in my my regular live streamers, if y'all want to have a real conversation with Doc, like some of them questions maybe we haven't heard him talk about on live stream, that's not my, maybe microphone related or camera related, but more of the thought process. That's what I love is the thought process. What do you think about before you go live? What, what do you envision? Like when you forget what you're saying, 
what do you do? Like those type of things that uh, come up when you've been live streaming for a little while. So if you guys have questions, let me know in the comment section. Uh, my guy, Chris Giles is in the chat. Good to see you here. Uh, so Chrissy. Zach, my dude, Zach is over there on the Amazon Live. Rome is on Amazon Live. Shout out to Rome on Amazon Live. I told that guy, I said, man, I think you should tap into Amazon Live. This dude shows up like every single day talking about lenses and cameras and all kinds of stuff over there in the live streaming space. So um, I just said go live and he didn't, he didn't took me literally. He didn't call live every single day over there on Amazon Live. So if you guys have Are you questions. Are listening, Luis? junkie camera because i've been telling him to do the same thing yeah, yeah. Now, now chris has been telling me to do the same thing but i'll be busy doing yeah. other craziness i mean i am live literally six days a week yeah. um which is funny to me because a lot of people ask like well how do you get good at live streaming i don't know try to go live six days a week yeah, <laughs> just, that'll help. It help. like it just it would just get better would it be what's funny is by the time you get to your say 36th day you know, you did this joint basically four weeks in a row, six weeks in a row, rather. Uh, yeah, you're, you're like almost you're in your flow. Mm -hmm. And so even now, some somebody who already had experience, somebody who was already good. Look, go watch India day one, day two of the comeback and then look at her now at day 50 something. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, snap, like it just gets better. It just does. You you have to. You know, and I don't know if people know this, even if you're not in the sports, you will hear about it because it's Tiger. But after a three year sabbatical from the accident, Tiger was making a comeback. And then somebody had the audacity to ask him a stupid question. Like, how did you get back in, Tiger? Like, what are you doing? He goes, I hit 250 golf balls a day. Duh, mm. stupid, that's a dumb question. <laughs> that's the only way golfers get good. They hit golf balls. Like there's, you can't read. Hmm, let me see. Address the ball. Uh, make sure your feet are plant and don't <laughs> broke. I mean, at some point in time, you got to hit golf balls, right? Yeah. So the only way to get good at live is be live. Yeah. Uh, shout out to be live, another platform where you can live stream. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was thinking Lakeside all the way live. Oh, man. It's all the way live. Yeah, th there's like so many platforms, so many devices, so many different softwares. But that one catalyst is us. Like we actually have to hit the record, hit unmute. We we have to actually get the equipment we need to show up if we say we're going to show up. And go ahead, Doc. Go ahead, Doc. Well, you just gave me a shirt. You just gave me a shirt idea. Uh, Ain't I nothing to it but to unmute it. Twenty five percent um, for every shirt right. sold. Um, <laughs> I'll write this down before I forget. And, uh, the old age would kick in. I'll be done for God. Ain't nothing to it but to unmute it. Love how, it. How many times? Like, if we didn't <laughs> go live, but oh, watch this, y'all. If we didn't go live, I might not have said what I said to spark an idea in Doc's mind that could cause him to generate more revenue in his business. Or if I don't go live with a Doc Rock you may walk away with a question that you could have got answered like today. That's why I encourage you guys to ask questions because we're like, this wasn't available that long ago when you not could, that long ago, when you could have like someone that actually knows what they're talking about, can give you a genuine answer and you can walk away better than what you were when you showed up. I think that's a huge value add. And I, like, I love this shirt. I, I forgot who did this shirt. I don't know if you remember Michelle Lawrence. Mich I love this shirt. I love this. It's like a constant reminder every time I show up on video that it, it's kind of like for me, it's not so much to tell people that I am the brand. It's like for me to remember, Monty, you are the brand. Like when you show up, people are coming for you. So it's my reminder that, okay, whether there's one person or 500 people, like it's me. Like I got to stay true to me when I show up on video. And sometimes I think that people can get distracted, like if they see too many people or not enough. Like, Doc, I know there's been times where oh, you had so a whole funny. bunch of people show up and like, it, hold on, it's like if you if you don't pay attention to your your confidence level go like this, I'm like hold on, y'all don't want to come to this live stream. I'm talking about some good stuff, but there's only two of y'all here. Like, don't y'all? This happens to us too, but like. If you know who you are and know what you're good at and the reason you're showing up on video, 
the right people will show up at the right time. There's times I've gone back, Doc, on a Saturday and watched your replay live streams. Not because yeah. I didn't want to watch them on Saturday when you did it. It's I was busy. Yeah, but it happens. I, I actually want the information, so I will go and watch because I want to watch Doc tell me the information like the information's out there i'm sure somebody has said it in their own way but can you kind of talk about that doc like the self-confidence of just showing up delivering and not worrying about some of the other things that go along with just showing up it, it's it's important because first of all you, number one you hit one solid point you never know who's listening right um about this time ish no actually it was closer to christmas it was around september of last year Kurt was on Amazon Live, minding his business, doing his thing like early in the morning. And some look, some dude in the chat posing to be Jeff Bezos. And he's like, that ain't no dang Jeff Bezos. It's like, yeah, it is. This is Jeff. How you doing, Kurt? Yep. Oh, you look, you're on CNN right now. I'm teaching the CNN people about Amazon Live. So say hi to CNN and about 58 watching. million viewers, yeah, Kurt. Kurt was like, happened. oh, and then Kurt got a little switch. Yo, he went into his preaching. Like, All right, y'all, look, look. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Well, let me see. <laughs> like, Kurt just fired it, right? Some people would have panicked and just dropped trial right there. They would not. They'd have left a little special sauce in the underwear. And here's what's funny. You just said something that's so poignant that I think folks might have missed it. So as we say in turn, say it again for the people in the back. Some of you guys are sitting there upset when it's two, three folks watching, but then losing your ability to control yourself, getting nervous and getting scared when there's a hundred some folks watching. And that's a bad spot to be in, right? Because I mean, Tiffany Haddish, you ain't ready. You should have the same big energy, whether it's one person or one million people. Because, again, if you listen to any of the experts in the field, I won't be the first person to tell you this. You are streaming. You're talking to one person. If you talk to the people like them. Right. So, first of all. Hi, guys. Never say that in the stream again. Hey, guys. No, not hey, guys especially in a recorded video streams, not so bad. Cause you can see them ish. You can see their names or whatever. Um, but never start out a video with, Hey everyone, like, no. And I do it for Ecamm cause I get made to, but you shouldn't do that. <laughs> you want to talk to one person. You want to, you want them to substitute. Hey, how are you doing today? You want them to think, you want them to think they heard you say Monty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause you want the person talking to you now. Pay attention to the older people in your family who, ha if they happen to watch YouTube or watch certain TV shows, they think that parasocial relationship, they think the person on the TV is their friend. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the, the millions of Jenners, Kylie Jenner girls out there, they think Kylie, Kylie, whatever that woman name is, they think she is their friend. You know, so that's the what you that's when you know you got it working when people feel like they could just run into you outside and have a conversation with you and y'all would be friends like y'all been friends since high school that's what you want your viewers to get from you so you have to put together the energy like you're talking to that person and just be helping as long as you're helping people you're good i don't care what anybody says you have the ugliest camera ugliest mic ugliest backdrop whatever if you're helping people nobody cares if you said Hey, I'm going to stream from my bathroom, right, with the echoey sound and everything. And you was telling people how to get an NFT that will put 10 Gs in your pocket by Friday. Ain't nobody saying nothing about your iPhone 4 and your echoey sound. Uh, I see uh camera junkie over there. He said, every school has a variety of different people teaching the same curriculum. Every student will have their own favorite teacher. And that's so true. Like, I remember. Come on, player. I remember like two teachers, one in particular, Miss Jordan, favorite teacher all time. She was the hardest teacher I ever had. AP Calculus was my class with her. AP Calculus. So it's not like she was like my float by class teacher. She was the hardest teacher that I had, but she was my favorite teacher as well because she 
made sure that we understood the information. Like she, you could tell that she actually cared about teaching us the information and wanted us yep. to succeed with it. So when I go back and you know the high school football games and I and I run into her because she's down there, it's like, hey, Miss Jordan, good to see you, and she remembers me, and I'm just like, you know that there's something, and you can do the same thing through video, like. Yes, I can't, I can't wait to go to Podfest VidFest and just connect with people in person that I've connected with through this. And it's like, well, hold on, like it, it, it's going to seem like we're friends before we even get there. And it's because like we had a dialogue through through video, whether it was in a Zoom, whether it was on a live stream. There, there's some people I've never met on a Zoom, like, but yeah. I've communicated with them in the chat. I've showed up on video; they've been in the chat. They've been on video. I've been in their chat. But when we connect, I'm sure it's going to feel like, oh, we've known each other forever, even though it's only been until it's like 2020. And we were all trying to figure out what the heck we were trying to do in our lives just to stay afloat. And I, I'm the video just does something, Doc. And it's amazing. Man. That was me and Tom Buck. We got a chance to meet up at the ECAM meetup about what, a month ago. And Heather was just making fun of us because you would think that like, me and Tom been hanging out every day for our whole lives. Like we just just climb. We start talking about Roadcaster Pro and the newly hoping coming very soon Roadcaster Pro Two. And then yo, don't you, say that. I you just would bought not. Mine. I just finally bought mine. And don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> you would not know that we wasn't friend the whole way. I even Indy and I are and Diane and I. Diane and I are even worse. Like I tell the story all the time because this is how funny this is, folks. We had. People of video at Albany back in September. And, you know, when I was running into people in the hallway, running the on video, like, yo, what's up, G? High five, you know, give the big hug, whatever. And it's like, man, good to see you, Roger Wakefield, everybody, even Roberto Blake. It's just like, whatever. That when, when I met Diana for the first time, even though we talked damn near every day since a little bit after the pandemic start, yo, she came to the room. We was trying to figure out what we needed to get a uh, um, live stream set up in the room. So we started putting everything together. Um, we realized that somebody forgot some wire. So we had to go to the Apple store to the Amazon. They got the Amazon store where you just grab stuff and walk out and it works <laughs> like Amazon four star. And so I'm looking around, you know, you know, black folks in upstate New York. I'm about, we about to get arrested, Diana. She's like, no, you just walk out. And I'm like, OK, if they come for me, you better bail me out. <laughs> so we were doing all of this work. And just like handling business, getting set up for the stream. And it was like 10 o'clock. And we was like, first of all, we didn't eat. And second of all, we never had the like, hey, we just met, you know, hug and handshake and blah, blah, blah. And we was both tripping. Like we fell into sync without the thing you see when you see your homie you ain't seen in a minute mm -hmm. because we literally talk every day. Yep. And that was it was funny to all of us, me, Luis, uh, Katie, everybody was just laughing because we never even had that. Hey, oh, my God, it's finally good to meet you moment because you do develop, you know, your real connections. So I laugh when people say, oh, you can't get any real friends on the Internet. And I'm like, man, yeah. you need to shut up or you need some more friends or maybe it's just you. <laughs> Doc, so at, so at PodFest VidFest, I get to speak. So I've never spoken on a stage like that i've spoken at like local events you know maybe 50 people in the room but like at this event i get to speak on stage and i'm also working on a meetup like it's a meet and greet with monty like i'm blowing my own mind like how the heck how am i doing a meetup and people actually want to come chris chris is in the chat too people like want to come just to see us they're not necessarily even coming for that event they want to come just to see us and just happened bro it's a trip <laughs> It's and it's trip. all because I showed up on video and just kind of shared what I used to share in private with, with a camera. Like, I've been fixing computers and talking video cameras and all this stuff for a long... I got certifications I, I've never talked about. It. I've got degrees in this stuff that I've never talked about. But none of that, like, kind of made, like, oh, we want to follow this guy. We want to know more about this guy. We want even want to hire this guy to some degree. But by showing up on video and doing the exact same thing, you guys... You got people that want to reach out, want to consultations, fly you here, do this, do that, can be on my podcast, do this. And you're just like, whoa, whoa, I just keep showing up on video. And it's, it's that exposure factor, right? And when so people funny. see it, it's like, hey, 
he's on video he must know what he's talking about right (laughs) you must be the expert in this industry that's what you just said it right there right a lot of people nowadays connect the fact that you are showing up as you must know what you're talking about the the opportunity to share your knowledge and be an authority on something is so simple now but you have to show up to glow up there's no other way possible it is what it is and so you ain't said nothing but a word it's yeah. absolutely the truth. That is yeah. amazing. You usually, you guys, I kind of go into the next segment, which is talking about uh, my guest favorite tech. But this is Doc. Go to Doc's YouTube channel and just <laughs> like, like just just go to YouTube channel. Like we ain't gonna, Doc has everything over there, right? If my Doc favorite new thing Amazon, though I then, bought is my Mac Studio. I gotta say, I absolutely okay. love my Mac Studio. Don't I mean? Okay, listen, fam. You got to do what you got to do, and I'm going to let you own this, so don't blame me. But listening to the bunch of tech YouTubers who get their money from getting more clicks on their video that might possibly make things sound worse than they are so that people watch the video because negative videos work in the U.S. Um, Yeah, don't listen to that. (laughs) Uh, Get your tech on. This thing is amazing. It's so fast. Saves me so much time. I know Cameron Junkie just got his, and it's funny because – he didn't even have a Mac last Christmas mm. Well, two Christmas ago. He had the mini and he went from mini to studio and like he already bought his second Mac in less than a year. So yeah, if you do this work, it's a flavor. So you telling me that this Mac mini on my desk should consider stepping aside for a little bit, being used for another situation and opening up this home this empty void that it's going to leave for a Mac studio. Is that what you're telling me, doc? Yep. And you can buy the base model. You don't got to go nuts. You can get the base model Mac studio and be like loud. Now, if you can afford to add the extra internal storage, do so. Even a lot of the people on, on the, on the TV are telling you, well, Apple charges so much for the internal storage and blah, 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 blah. No one ever talks about why they charge so much for their internal storage because it's stupid fast. Like the joint gets like 7,500 megabits per second read and write. Nothing external is going to do that. It doesn't even exist anywhere. <laughs> like the internal read and write is, it's, it's silly is not even the nice enough word. <laughs> it's beyond silly. The internal read and writes in this thing is incredible. So if you crank out a lot of content, you edit a lot of video, it'll be worth it. And I'm just telling you, man, it is glorious. I, I think I... I think this thing every day before I walk out the room, I'll be like, Big Mac, thank you, play. Because <laughs> it, it, it gets down. It gets down. Uh, I'm over here the Mac up. Mini is, is called Grogu, you know, because he was maybe Yoda at the time. So I get to blame this next purchase on you. Over I get here, blamed I'm... for everybody's purchases, fam. So, I, you know what? I'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to just, I'm going to stop fighting it now. I used to get mad. Don't blame me for your problems, but no, exactly. I'm going to just take it's it. It's like, you know, you have to do the full unboxing video now. It's like when you see somebody post about something, you're like, dang on, do I need that? Like, I still haven't got the Elgato foot pedal, but. Um, I, I was so close. Thank goodness it was just sold out. So then I kind of forgot about the fact that I needed one because I really don't need it. Um, I'm looking over here at the chat and uh, Hannah on, on Amazon is over here trying to figure out who India is. So India, if you are still watching on on YouTube, jump over there to Amazon Live um, and let the people know who you are, what you do, because because uh, I don't have your YouTube in front of me right now. But uh, jump over Dude, there on this Amazon. Is, this is while we're streaming. All right, let me let me go full screen on you so you can so we can see this. What well, explain to the viewers what we're looking at, Doc. Uh, when you plug in a drive that you bought in from the Piggly Wiggly to your machine, it does about 400. Uh, if you plug in the SSD you got from Costco, uh, it'll do like a thousand. This thing is cranking 5,000 rewrites while we're live streaming, and it basically telling you that this thing can edit 12K video, which don't even exist yet. Well, it does, but not for you folks. You right. can edit 12K video without stuttering a frame. It's stupid. <laughs> it's stupid. So what does 12K mean to a standard human being? That means that you could edit basically three 4K streams stacked on top of each other at the same time and never miss a beat. That's just bananas. Oh, boy. 
on a on a two thousand dollar machine, which is funny again because everybody said two thousand dollars. Oh, that's expensive. I'm like, what do you people do? What are you talking about? Like, I don't know where you came from, but my first Mac was like ten Gs for a two GS. Yeah, those videos with a black I've and white seen, screen. You know, with, uh, the editors <laughs> comparing their like high their their car purchases <laughs> versus the new ones. I'm just like. Yo, that's like nine day difference. Um, it, it it's like a Apple when it came out with that that silicon chip. That's like it hit the switch, and it's just like boom. it's just crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, David, thanks for following me here over on Amazon. Uh, let me remind you guys real quick before I come back to Doc to close this thing out. Uh, the sure giveaway. If you guys want to be a part of that, custom sm fifty eight dot com. Go there. Put in your name. Put in your email. I will announce the winner live on my Amazon live channel on May 10th. So uh, if you guys want to be a part of that, shout out to Sher for always hooking me up with some cool stuff. And in this case, hooking y'all up with some cool stuff as well. So make sure you guys go check that out. That contest is this week, this week being May 2nd through the May 8th, 2022. Because there will be people that watch the replay of this because Doc was on the replay, not so much because... I hosted this. They just want to listen to Doc. <laughs> anyway, Doc, as we close this thing out, man, what I always do is ask my guests to leave us with some with some thoughts, with some encouragement, or even a kick in the butt or why we really need to embrace video, show up on video, or maybe there's a trend, something that you foresee that we really need to pay attention to when it comes to video. So as we close out, I'm going to pass it over to you for the final word to leave us with something Something, see, it's tripped over my words, y'all. Leave us with something. Leave us with one of them docisms uh, that we can take for the rest of the year here in 2022, sir. All right, so this one is super important because it turns out that this space is only growing. Like walking into something and assuming that it's saturated or because somebody else did it, you can't do it, whatever. You got to stop that because there is um, one of my students has told me this recently and it has stuck with me so heavily. There is a U size hole in somebody today. Mm. You know what I mean? That's good. And we've all been in that situation where, you know, moms, friends, wifey, you know, uh, cutting Nate them done told you that there's just something that you weren't seeing. And you wasn't hearing it because, well, it was mom, cousin, Nate, them, you know, wifey, whatever. And then somebody told it to you again, just like, hey, man, let me tell you a little something that you might not know. And then you hear from that one particular person and you're like, you know what, man, I've been hearing that a lot lately. You're right. Let me go ahead and, you know, fix my fade, you know, it's like get rid of the dreadlocks or whatever. And it was funny, like everybody else done told you this six, seven, eight months. You ain't heard it, right? That one person that caught you that right day when you was ready to listen, because when the student is ready, the teacher would show up, holla, right? You finally let that join in. You are that for somebody, regardless of your station, regardless of where you're at, regardless of your knowledge level or whatever. You might just repeat what I just said to somebody else. And because you didn't say it with the heavy East, East Coast retired thug accent, they might listen to you. You know what I'm saying? Or you don't look like the Taliban with this beard. They might listen to you. So there is a huge size hole in somebody out there. You've got to tell these stories. Every time you tell your story, every time you share your knowledge, every time you take your side hustle and convert it to a side helpful, you are making life better for somebody else. And when you do that, you will win. Givers gain. So just start giving stuff out. Man, that's good right there. I'm about to watch the replay on myself. I'm about to borrow some of them, like you said, Doc. I'm about to say it in my my voice and my style and it, with with the way I look and show up on camera. Man, that was good. It's what it is, because I'm telling you, every single one of us. Oh, okay, I can't think of this one recently. This one's super small, but I I don't think of it recently. Forever, I remember hiding from my mom. I remember getting butt whippings. I remember getting sent to my room because I refused to eat them little teeny cabbages. Them things was nasty. Brussels sprouts was never happening. And then we just happened to be in Portland and they had like, you know, roasted Brussels sprouts with almonds and some other kind of like hipster sprinkle on it. And I was just like with some people that I couldn't not eat it with because it would have been embarrassing. And then I was like, oh, this choice is good. <laughs> what it was, mom's had the little frozen square brick four for a dollar from Safeway. You just drop it in some water. Yeah, maybe that's not that good. 
So I even challenge you, if you don't believe me, try some food that you swore you don't like, but try it prepared by an actual chef in a modern setting and see if you still don't like it because you're probably wrong. Doc, I appreciate you for being here, man. If you guys do not follow Doc, and I, I don't, I, most of y'all should follow the names <laughs> I saw, but if you do not follow Doc Rock and you want to understand not only live streaming, but just have some fun in a live stream with an awesome group of people that just go crazy in his chats, do, do a search on YouTube, type in Doc Rock, and I promise you will find him. If you do not find him, you type something in wrong. Um, Doc is everywhere when it comes to showing <laughs> up on video. This man is a wealth of knowledge. Doc, I appreciate you for being here tonight, sir. Thank you. Uh, as we close out, you guys, just a reminder, every single Monday, well, it won't be every single Monday. I'm looking to actually change some things up a little bit, so stay tuned. Uh, but I go live on Mondays, typically at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube and Amazon Live, working on some big things on the Amazon Live side of things, so you guys make sure that you follow me over there. And again, if you want to be a part of this giveaway this week, make sure that you go to customsm58.com and have your chance to win this custom SM58. And if y'all win it, please do me a favor, like tag me in something, like show up on something, cause sure it's gonna send it to you. I don't have it, so I can't show you what it actually looks like. They got it, that's the picture of it, and they're gonna send it to you. So do me a favor, like show up on video with it, just put it in, in the front, of the screen so I can see it or tag it on Instagram or Facebook, YouTube, create a YouTube video on something, be a part of the video aspect so I can see who wins this microphone. I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's show. Thank you all for being here, for showing up and being a part of my community. And with that, you guys enjoy the rest of your evenings and I'll see you 